Hello, mathematicians. Um, today's we're going to continue uh, weighted averages, and I'm actually really, really excited about this objective because this is one of the most applicable objectives that you guys will have in high school because this this will directly teach you how you can look at your grades and calculate your GPA, which is something you need to be doing on a regular basis throughout high school. So you'll understand now how the math works, really works behind your GPA. Now, to get started, GPA is actually a lot easier than you may think. And a lot of students struggle with understanding um, GPA and percentages and stuff. But I want to show you a few things that actually make it pretty easy to understand. Okay, the very first thing that I want you to understand, and this is actually a lot easier than you may have thought of it before. You actually don't really have to memorize the GPA for each grade, okay? Because it works very simply like this, and you guys can write this uh, just right here. So let's start right here. An A, it, exactly an A, not an A minus, not an A, and not an A plus, but an A is simply a 4.0, okay? A B is a 3.0, a C is a 2.0, a D is a 1.0, and an F is obviously a 0.0, okay? So that's pretty simple, right? A is a 4, B is a 3, C is a 2, D is a 1. All you got to do is remember that an A is a 4.0, and just go down a 1, basically 1 point GPA from there, okay? Now, the other thing with that, to do the plus or the minus, all you have to do is add a third, or subtract a third, which is, um, you know, a third is 0.3 repeating. So if we want to look at an A+, plus, so come down here now, and write really small. We're going to go all the way across our paper, so start all the way in the left, and write really small. So an A+, plus, okay? Well, an A is a 4, so an A+, plus, if we add a third, would be a, so on your calculator, do 4, plus a third, and then can make sure you convert it back to a decimal, okay? And it will get you 4.3 repeating. Oops, that kind of looks like a five. I don't know if I can erase that or not. Yeah, let me retry that. 4.3 uh, repeating, okay? Now, we already said an A is a 4.0. A B or no, let's let's actually go so we had an A plus, an A, and a minus. I'm gonna have to save a little bit more room. An A minus. Okay, now on your calculator, do four, because an A is a four, but now we have a minus. So we're gonna subtract a third. So do four minus a third, and then convert it to a decimal. And you're going to get Okay, if you subtract a third, you're going to get 3.67 repeating, uh, whatever it is. But let's just say, let's just round that to the nearest tenth. Okay, so we underline the place by your draw an arrow next door. Ask that number, are you bigger than four? Number's going to say yes, obviously. So an A minus, if we round it to the nearest tenth, would be a 3.7. Okay? Now, and again, keep room here at the bottom because we're actually going to write percentages in here at the bottom. Okay, so now, what comes after an A minus? Well, the next possible grade that we can get is a B plus. And you guys, again, should not be taking up quite as much room as me working to the right. You're going to need a lot more room. Okay, a B plus. Well, just think, what's a B? Well, an A is a 4, a B is a 3. A B plus we simply have to add, think plus, you gotta add, right? You have to add a third. So do three plus a third, and you're going to get 3.3 .3 repeating. So again, this would be 3.3 .3 repeating. Now, if we wanna round the nearest tenth, okay, if we underline the place value, draw near next door, ask that number are you bigger than four, the number's gonna say no, so it don't grow, so we have 3.3. So a B plus, round to the, unit, to the nearest tenth, is a 3.3, okay? Let's go to a B. Well, that's easy. A B is a 3.0, okay? Now let's go to a B minus, okay? 
Well, a B minus, a B, again, always start by what this main grade is. It's a B, okay, so that would be a 3.0, but it's a B minus. So we have to subtract a third. So 3 minus a third will give us 3, or, or uh, sorry, 2 point, let me erase that, will give us 2.67, and then if 7 repeating, and then if we underline the place where I join our next door, we're going to get 2.7, okay? Now, you guys need to finish for, as part of your homework, you have to finish this out and go all the way to an, an F grade. So you should have what a, let's see, next would be a C plus, okay? And then you have a C, and then you'd have a C minus, and then you have a D plus, a D, D minus, an F. You guys need to finish that out before class, okay? And if you need to come up here, you know, make extra room, um, you can do that. But make sure before you get to class, you have those finished, okay? Now, I want to go over um, percentages with you guys because that's the biggest thing that we got to work on is understanding, oh, if I got this percent on a test, what grade is that? And then hopefully now we can figure out what GPA that is, okay? Now, percentages. Let me change colors here. Okay. Um, A's are obviously in the 90% range, okay? Now, your, your A grades basically go from a 96% to a 93%, okay? Now, so that means an A plus would be 97% or higher, right? And then a minus would be a 90% through 92%, okay? So again, your work should be much more organized than me. You have a lot more room to write versus me writing on the iPad here, okay? Now, a B plus, okay? Think about what a B plus is. What percentages would it be? And you guys should write it right down here. I'm going to write it right up here for, for sick of space, okay? A B plus, well, it's anything from an 89%, because if we get to a 90, that turns into an A minus, right? So it's an 89%, and it goes through an 87%, okay? So any grade between an 87%, 88%, or 89% would be a B plus, okay? Now a B would be, here's the key to this, you guys. If you just remember that the main grades, like a straight B or a straight A, not a minus, not a plus, but the straight grades like a B, okay, they go from the 3% to the 6%, okay? Bs are in the 80s, so it's going to go anything that's an 86, between an 86 and an 83% would be a B, okay? B minus would obviously be 80% to 82%, okay? So along with those letter grades now, you need to fill this in, each letter grade, the pluses, the minuses, and what percent that corresponds to, okay? So make sure right now, hit pause, take a few minutes to do that. And if you're not sure, check out your agenda, check out your planner, it's in there, but memorize these, understand them. Okay, remember that like an A or B or C is whatever that percent is, and it's the 3% to the 6%. And if you know that, I think you can easily get the plus and the minus part of it as well. So go ahead and hit pause, do that now. Okay, now that you have those done, uh, let's go and actually apply this to a very real life situation with grades. Okay. So if we read this, the GPA of 10th through 12th graders is computed and using a weighted average because some classes, like reading seminar, are shorter than others. Okay? Use the grading scale conversion sheet you should have in your agenda to compute this student's grade point average. Remember, pass-fail classes do not count towards your GPA. Okay, that's really important. And reading seminar counts as a half of a class. Okay, and we also say, um, instead of just half of a class, we say a half, let's put in parentheses here, a half credit is what we say. Okay. 
Now, you may be thinking right now, oh, pass-fail classes don't count towards my GPA, then who cares about them, right? Ridiculous, okay? Think about if a college, when you're applying to a college, if a college sees an F for advisory, for advisory, what do you think that says about your character? Okay, it's not good. Any Fs they see, whether it's for an enrichment class, anything, it speaks to your character. Okay, and they're definitely going to look at that and be wondering questions or ask you questions about, well, why did you fail advisory when you know you shouldn't be failing advisory or gym or classes like that? Okay, so um, let's actually apply what we know now. Okay, so let's go through each one of these classes and we got to figure out what the GPA is. So if we look at this first one, um, composition two, that's a regular class. What we do is we say that's worth, it's a regular class, so we say it's worth one credit, one full credit. Okay, now a B minus, what GPA is that? Well, think about it. A B is a 3.0, so that means a B minus is a 3.0 minus a third, which would be 2.6 uh, repeating. And that'd be a 2.6 repeating if you subtract a third. So let's write 2.6 repeating. So six, six there. Now, I just actually realized something down here when we were doing these, I wrote out 3.67 repeating. I really want you to change that because that was dead wrong. What I did is I actually rounded to nearest hundredths to start. This is actually 3. Point, again, make sure you change this. This is actually 3.6 repeating. So it would be 3.66666. This is 3.3 repeating, so that's good. But this one right here again, this B minus, is 2.6. Again, it's 2.666 repeating, okay? So make sure you change that in your notes because I had that wrong. Um, so this right here, I think this one I had wrong too. And you guys probably realize that. Hopefully you did. It's not 3.7 repeating. It's 3.6 repeating. Oh, I think that was our rounded. I apologize. Let me, let's change this. Our rounded value was just 3.7, not repeating, it's just 3.7 every round. Okay, you guys can yell at me when we get to class. All right, back up here. So if we round this though to the nearest tenth, okay, we would get that this is a 2.7 GPA, okay? So for composition, the B minus, it's a 2.7 GPA. All right, chemistry, well that's pretty easy, it's a B, we know an A is a 4, a B is a 3. So let's just write a 3.0 here. Okay. And let's also write that it's one credit. Okay. Um, algebra, it's a regular full class, so it's one credit. A B, again, that's easy, it's a 3.0. Okay. Now, this is honors band, but for our sake right now, uh, we're going to cross out the honors for sake of notes. But know this though, okay? Honors and AP classes, the same grade. So like this is an A plus. So if we take out the honors, an A plus, well, an A is a 4.0. So that makes an A plus, we would have to add a third. Okay, so that would be a 4.3. Okay, but, and I want you to just keep this in mind. Again, we cross honors out, but honors and AP classes basically increase or have a weighted GPA. So if this, if we were saying it was honors ban, this would no longer be a 4.3, it would actually be a 5.3 because it's an honors class, okay? So getting, working hard and getting into those honors and AP classes can really help out your weighted GPA quite a bit because an A and an honors is worth more than a A in a regular class because it's harder. All right, let's keep going down the list here. So B plus, well, geometry is a full credit class, okay? And a B plus, well, a B is a 3.0. So a B plus, we have to add a third, okay? So that would be 
0.3 if we round. Okay. Physical education, passing, but again, pass-fail classes don't count as a full credit. Uh, reading seminar. Now, remember, it's set up above. Reading seminar is a half-credit class, and it's a B, so that's a 3.0. Okay. Classic lit. That's a full credit. And a D. Ooh, yuck. Um, let's figure out what a D is. Well, an A is a four point, a B is a three point, a C is a two point, so that means a D is a 1.0. That will not get you into college. Neither will this C down here. Okay, a C, A is a four point, B is a three point, C is a 2.0. Okay, so now, oh, I forgot one thing. I'm not with it tonight. Okay, band. Okay, your electives, they count, they don't count as a full credit. They count as a half credit here at Pritzker, okay, because you don't have them every day, just like PE, okay, you don't have it every day, so it's a half credit class. So, now we need to go back up here and calculate the GPA, okay, and here's how we do it. We just need to find the average of all of these, but we're going to have to weight these. Now, these ones that are a full one credit. Do we need to show like, oh, 2.7 times one credit plus, and don't write this down yet, okay? Again, don't write this down. So composition, one credit, 2.7. Chemistry, uh, 3.0, one credit. Is it changing anything when we multiply these by one? And the answer is no. So do we really need to show that we're multiplying all these by that one credit? Not necessarily, okay? But for the, fir for the first one, why don't you guys go ahead and write down this 2.7 times 1, and then just put a note that that's the actual credit there, okay? Again, for notes, make sure you understand what we should actually do, okay? <clears throat> um, all right, so we're just going to go down the list and add up all these GPAs. So first, composition was a 2.7. Next, chemistry, 3.0. Plus, and we don't have to write 3.0. Uh, next, Algebra 2, full credit, so it's another 3 point. Okay, next, BAM. Now, here's where you got to pay attention to the half credit. We have to do a 4.3, but is that worth a full credit? No. So we have to weight it. We have to multiply it by a half credit. Okay. And then just keep adding. So then we have geometry, which was a 3.3. Plus, uh, what was next? PE doesn't count. Reading seminar, we gotta weight it. So it's a 3.0. But we gotta weight it by that half credit. Okay, plus. Let me scroll down a little bit. Um, after reading seminars, classic lit which was that D, ooh, that 1.0, plus finally that C, which is a 2.0, okay? Now, once we do that, here's the key. If we just added up all the classes, okay, what would we divide by? And you may be thinking, hmm, what would we divide by? Well, what did we weight some of the things by? We weighted some of the things by the credits. So that tells us what we need to divide all of this by. We need to divide the GPA by the number of credits or classes that we took. Okay, And if we do that, we simply have to add up the credits. So composition, one credit. Chemistry, one credit. So, so far up to two. Out of two, now we're up to three. Band. We're up to three and a half credits. Geometry, one credit. <clears throat> um, keep going down the list here. Reading seminar, half credit. Classic lit, one. Uh, world history, one. So that gets us up to, hopefully you got it by now, seven total credits. So we have to divide this whole thing. And again, hopefully yours isn't quite so big and didn't take up so much room. But we have to divide, add all that up, and then divide it by seven. So go ahead and do that now. Add all of that up and then divide it by the seven credits. 
Okay, go ahead and hit pause and do that now. All right. When you do that, and divide by the seven credits, your answer that you should get is it's something I think like a 2.735. Okay. Now, if we want to round to the nearest tenth, okay, on the land place where you draw our next door, we would end up with, and I'm hopefully we have a little bit more room again, that would give us a 2.7 GPA. Okay, so this person with those grades has a 2.7 GPA. Okay. All right, um, what I want you guys doing is for homework as part of this video. Okay, again, if you're signing this video as part of this video, I want you to um, finish this page. <clears throat> and if we look through these, you know, they're pretty basic. All we have to do is tweak one little thing. Like B it asks, what would this student's GPA be if he could improve his algebra grade, algebra 2 grade to an A? So the only thing that's changing in this formula is instead of instead of this algebra 2 grade being a 3.0, we're saying, well, what if it raised to an A? Okay, so that would now be a 4.0. So you gotta just re-add all those things, but now it's a 4.0. Okay. So look carefully at these and show all of your work. Your work on all these should be where you add up the GPA. Do not forget to weight the half credit courses by half. Okay. Add them up, divide by how many credits it took. Okay, so again, part of your homework is to finish this page um, before class.